Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Today, we're going to be continuing a story that is a founding father in the anime Marvel crossover universe that we've built over the last going on four years now, if you believe it or not. And it's one of the oldest stories that we have here on the channel, that being Don Machi, The Last King. What if Belle Crenell was Thor? And we're going to be continuing with season four. If you'll remember, when we first started Anime Marvel, at the time, Don Machi only had three seasons out. So I covered all three seasons during phase one that led to the first crossover event. And since then, haven't really touched it since because it was only just last year when Don Machi continued with its season four. And thus, now we can officially continue on with the story. This is one that I've held on the back burner for a minute now. It's one that's near and dear to me because it's a story that helped get this series off the ground, if you will. And it's one that I've had a lot of nostalgia with writing, so I can't wait to get back into it. But without further ado, let's get into today's video. So as always, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. The city of Oario, home of the Great Labyrinth, where many adventurers who joint parties led by gods and goddesses known as familias would band together and travel into the depths below, exploring level by level, battling the various monsters in gains of riches, treasures, and fame beyond your wildest dreams. For Belle Crenell, the now inheritor of Mjolnir, the power of Thor and his will, a lot had happened to the young hero in his adventures. It all started that fateful day when he was alone in the dungeons, when he was trying to train and grind in levels after feeling like a failure for so long. It wasn't uncommon for him to be made fun of, he tried his best, but often his best wasn't good enough. And yet, as if it were by fate, he ended up stumbling into an unexplored cave where he found the sacred hammer known as Mjolnir that belonged to the once powerful god who had disappeared long ago, known as Thor. Of course, Bell was grateful for every opportunity he was given. And along the way, he made friends on top of being accepted by the goddess Hestia, there was also Lily in the wealth, as well as Yamato, along with San Jono, all friends of whom he had fought beside and who he cared for dearly. But of course, there was always doubt in his mind, doubt about the power that he wielded, if he was even worthy to have such a power. After all, Bell wasn't the type of person to just undermine everything that had happened to him. The only reason why he had gotten as far as he had was because of the power he possessed. In his eyes, anyone could have became worthy of holding Thor's hammer. But it wasn't that simple. He was told, through the vestiges of the power, that only someone who was truly deemed worthy could wield the power of Thor, and that in their eyes, he was chosen. If someone like Bell wasn't worthy enough, then who truly was? Of course, there were battles that were fought along the way, some victories, some defeats. And most recently, he had been on a world-changing adventure, traveling through what was known as the multiverse, fighting alongside other great heroes from other worlds. It was something that he'd never forget. But still, he was back home, and it was time to focus on his own journey. It was nice to meet the others, but still, once it was all said and done, he had his own world to protect. 
This was his destiny, his mission that he had to see through. For now, they had been getting a lot of assignments from the guild because of the ever-growing fame and popularity of Bell and his party, it wasn't uncommon for the guild in question to have Bell's familia be hired for certain missions and other campaigns. Of course, it meant that it paid well, but still, they were now being recognized for their power. They weren't just a small run-of-the-mill group that could be ignored any longer. Everyone was taking note of what they could do. Bell especially. It wasn't uncommon for the gods to speak amongst themselves about his progress. Everyone wondering where he would ultimately wind up. Some believe that if Bell continued on his path, he might be able to achieve godhood. Of course, Hestia wouldn't be against such an idea. To think, her and Bell, god and goddess, they could live together forever. The idea was intriguing enough. She'd never have to worry about Bell growing old, about him dying. They could, they could have a happily ever after. Of course, there were other gods who were against the idea. Even if he could wield Thor's hammer, what right did he give Bell to ascend to the throne of godhood? But of course, ever since Thor's disappearance from long ago, it was just assumed that he had died. They couldn't find him in the earthen realms or in the heavens above. So they had no way of knowing what ultimately happened to him. What was his fate? All they knew was that the hammer remained and that the power for sure was passed down to Bell. While the debates would continue, Bell chose to pay it no mind. In the end, it really didn't matter to him whether he became a god or whether he stayed a human, that wasn't really his main priority. His main concern was exploring the labyrinth, helping the Zenos, and preparing for the potential battles that were to come, especially against the likes of Gore. Gore, the god butcher in question. His name had become taboo amongst the gods often believed that just speaking it could bring misfortune. For some unknown reason, Gore, an ancient god who ruled alongside the other ones, turned against them and declared war. It was because of him that the humans and the gods teamed up in the first place. The labyrinth was believed to be all that remained, and that the reason for exploring them all was to take care of what remained of Gore's forces, the various minotaurs, monsters, and other creatures that had all congregated to that area. At least that was the idea. Of course, no one had ever managed to complete all of the dungeons, so there was no way of knowing what would be on the other side. But still, that left everything up to chance. In the meantime, Bell had recently been given a new assignment, for he and his familia by none other than Aina. She was the headmaster of the guild, a beautiful elf woman, and she was quite fond of Bell. The fact that he had grown from being the little rookie that he was to now being known as Bell Crenell, the wielder of the power of Thor, his hero name now being known as Gale Thunder. It was definitely one that struck awe and inspiration into many. Those who thought that they never had a chance, who saw themselves in Bell. They had someone to look up to, someone whose ideals they could follow. Bell had gone to the guild because he wanted to get more information about this new level of the dungeons that his team was being tasked with exploring. Of course, they were going to be receiving some help, as they'd be having members from other familias tag along to form a group party. Various gods who they had made friends with were willing to send some of their own companions, such as the god of potions and medicines, Mayak. He would be sending two former members of the Apollos familia who had joined his in Daphne and Cassandra, as well as Naza. Then there was the other god, one known as 
Takemichizuki, who would be sending along two of his own warriors to accompany them, as well as having one of his former ones who had joined the Hestia Familia, that being in the form of Kashimi and Hitachi. And finally, there was someone else who was going to be tagging along, Aisha. She was a former member of the Ishtar Familia, before the goddess Ishtar met her untimely demise during the events of the Red Light District arc. And word through the grapevine was that Bell and his party, they were going to be going on a little adventure. Of course, Aisha wanted to check in on her friend, Sanjo, and knowing that she was safe and secure in Bell's party, she also wanted to tag along to see what other tricks the young hero could have to offer. She did have interest in him. A boy with that level of strength and skill, he could bear strong children. And, well, the kickbacks to come with those can't be ignored either. Safe to say, everyone had their eyes on Bell. He was the talk of the town, or talk of the city, so to speak. Heroes and villagers alike, his name was starting to become known worldwide. Well, at least as far as the world that they knew of, so to speak. It wasn't uncommon to hear talk about Bell's latest adventure, the latest monster he had managed to fight and take down. Yes, he was definitely catching the attentions of everyone that knew him, both human and god alike. Hestia, in question, was even starting to become a bit jealous. Jealous of the fact that it seemed like everyone was trying to take her precious bell away from her. She was having a few drinks at the tavern with some of her fellow god companions, lamenting this very idea. It seemed like just yesterday no one wanted Bell. No one even gave him a second glance. She took him in when no one else did, and now... Ever since he started becoming famous and popular, it's like everyone just can't seem to take their eyes off of him. Everywhere she looks, someone's asking, can Belle do this? Can Belle do that? Can we get Belle to accompany us? Ooh, can Belle go out for a date? Hell no, we he can't. Her friends would try to comfort her. As they saw it, the members of their familia were like children. Children who were growing up right before their very eyes. Even for the others, they lamented at the fact that the members of their own familias had started growing more and more independent. They didn't come to their gods as often as they used to, and there was nothing wrong with that. It showed a level of growth and maturity. They were taking their lives into their own hands, and you couldn't be any more prouder. But... At the same time, it still left this feeling of emptiness, in a way. To a god, the life of the children, of their familia, it seems to flash in no more than an instant. What's a lifetime for them is just a memory at most. But there was something about this current group that they had. They weren't ready to just let it all go. Of course, in time, they're... Days and the sun would draw to a close. New members would arrive, new familias. The cycle always continued. But even still, there were moments like these where the gods envied the humans. They got to enjoy everything at such a slow and even pace to truly live a full life. The life of a god or a goddess could often be sad. Watching the people you come to love and know become nothing more but a fleeting memory. What's years, decades for one person is but a small glimpse in time for the other. Everyone often says that they want to be a god, but this is something that you have to deal with. The idea that you can never truly form a deep connection with those in your familia because they may not be here for too long. And as they spoke, the doors in the tavern would burst open. At first, Hestia and the others wondered who it could be, but it didn't take long to recognize who it was. Of course, they couldn't believe it. 
Why was he here? Of all people. <laughs> ah, yes, my god companions. It's been a while. Why didn't you tell me you were going out for a drink? Hercules, Mayak would say. Ah, Sir Hercules, Takamichizuki would say. It's been far too long. If it's been a day, Master Combatant. And how's our little Hestia doing? Hercules would pat Hestia on the head as she swallowed away his hand in anger. What you want, you big oath? You go barging in all willy-nilly, acting like you don't have any manners at all. You know, just because we're gods, it doesn't mean we can go around damaging other people's property. Sheesh, have some tact. Class, you smell like you haven't showered in eons. No, no, I merely awoke from my slumber. It's been a while, eh? I looked around to find where my familia had gone, and they seemed to have all died, tragically. Do you know how long you've been asleep? Hephaestus would say. Uh, it couldn't have been that long. <sighs> I think I only did was shut my eyes, and you've been asleep for almost 200 years. Huh? Your familia died. They grew old. Some got killed in the labyrinth. There were whole funerals. They were looking everywhere for you. And you were asleep? Do you have any shame? We all thought you wandered off into the great pastures, never to be seen again. Well, no, no. It's no need to get so riled up. And you're a god. You're supposed to take yourself and your position with a bit more of high esteem. <sighs> Whatever. Anyway... I don't know whether if I, my mind is playing tricks on me or not, but I could have sworn I sensed Thor's power. The last time I checked, that guy had wandered off to the ends of the world never to be seen again. So what? Has the God of Thunder finally shown himself? If so, bring him to me so he may accept my challenge. I have been at rest for far too long, and it's time to work off the rust. They tried to explain to him what was going on. Hestia, of all people, becoming more feistier than ever. This big oaf was going to try to pick a fight with Belle, and she wasn't going to have it. She stood on her chair, but even then, she was still overtowered by the god. But still, her ferocity and her spirit could rival any of theirs. I'll have you know right now, you won't be getting close to my Belle at all, you understand me? I don't want you trying to do anything that will harm him. Bell? Hercules would ask curiously. And just who in the devil is a Bell? Bell! Bell Cronell, member of my familia, my precious pride and joy. I won't let you get near him. You understand me? Not ever. <sighs> Whoever this Bell was. Hercules knew the power that he sensed. Without a shadow of a doubt, it was the power of Thor. In either case, he'd get to the bottom of it, and he'd be using Hestia as bait. While Bell was in the guild finishing the paperwork before his next dungeon quest, people would come storming in immediately, looking for him. Bell! Where's Bell? Lord Bell, we need your help. Huh? What's wrong? It's the goddess. Goddess Hestia. She's in trouble. Let me go. Let me go. The other gods were trying their best to stop Hercules and what he was doing. As he paraded, holding Hestia by the hair, lifting her up and parading her through the streets. Oh, Bell. Do make yourself present, or will you not answer the cry of your goddess in her time of need? Stop! I won't let you! I won't let you mess with Belle! 
Hestia would manage to kick Hercules in the face, angering the god much as he simply threw her to the ground. Although the moment he did so, he felt something, a singe of burning energy shooting through the air as he turned to catch a bolt of lightning to the face. As Bell yelled out the cry for lightning bolt, it actually staggered Hercules quite a bit. But what came next was really the gut check, as Milnir was thrown, hitting him directly in the gut, sending him flying a good bit through the street. As Bell would rush over to Hestia's side, Goddess, are you all right? Did he hurt you, Bell? I'm, I'm fine, but don't go near him. It's the god Hercules. He's, he's going to pay. <clears throat> Milnir, why, if it's been a thousand years, it's been a day since I last seen you. So, it means that Thor is present. If you're looking for him, he's right here. Bell held out his hand as Milnir came back towards him once again. What's the matter with you? Putting your hands on my goddess? Do you seek a death wish? Bell, watch yourself. The other gods would say, "We do not condone his actions, but be mindful. You are still in the presence of a god." Now, now, don't quell the boy's spirit. I like it. It's not every day that a human chooses to stand up to me, and even more so, that the mortal is actually able to wield the power of Milnir. So, the rumors are true, and you have been the new chosen vessel. And if that is the case, then it means my dear sparring mate has been lost to time. But still. I question what would make the likes of you worthy, though. I guess I can't be the one to question prominence. It seems as though fate has been on your side, Bell Crenell. Hercules grinned as he got up from the crater he had been knocked into by Bell, reaching towards his side as he pulled from it a golden mace. You know, Thor and I used to have a many a battle. We would trade strike for strike, increasing our power and truly cutting loose. So I wonder. I wonder if you are worthy. Can you hold up? Or perhaps our dear friend Odinson made a mistake. Let's find out. Bell would rush towards Hercules as the two would trade blow for blow, the hammer colliding with the mace. Although after the third strike, Bell would be sent flying, knocking him back all the way into a brick wall. Surely you can do more than that. If this is all the power that you are able to produce. Then I am afraid you are indeed unworthy, unworthy of being a challenge to me. I'm not done. Bell would flip Milnir into the air, as it transformed into the Valkyrie shield. I learned this trick from an old friend. Bell would throw the shield in a similar motion to another shield-wielding hero. At first, Hercules thought that Bell had missed, but Bell was a fast learner, and he paid attention to a lot of things. The hammer would bounce from surface to surface until eventually it went spinning, hitting Hercules in the head, before flying back to Bell's arm, transforming into Milnir once again, as Bell was spinning around on the leather strap. Flying directly towards Hercules and stunning him with another shot of lightning bolt. As Hercules was staggered, 
Bell would transform it once again, turning it into the Odin sword, looking to stab him in the abdomen. However, Hercules managed to stop him, the blade only piercing but a small amount, enough to draw just a few drops of blood. Hmm. Cheeky little bastard, aren't you? What can I say? I'm really stubborn. And I'm motivated. I see, I see. But let's see how long that motivation can last. Hercules decided to put in a little more effort. And that's when the tide of battle would change. Bell being knocked around back and forth, beaten into a bloody pulp. Before long, Hestia, not wanting for this to protest any further, she would move in between both Bell and Hercules. That's enough! Stop this madness! You know that a fight like this, not even one that's sanctioned is against the law, have you no shame? Goddess, I know. You are a part of my familia, Bell. I will not allow harm to come to you. If this oaf wants a fight, he can fight me. Hmm. I have no plans to do so. I've seen all I've come to see. You are a talented warrior, Bell, but you rely too much on tricks and the gratitude of others. Talent you have, heart you have, but will you do not. What? I can still keep fighting. I'm not. You're done, as far as I'm concerned. If this fight was to go on any longer, I would actually kill you. I do not know why you were chosen. If I'm being quite frank, I don't see what makes you so special. You're just some punk kid that got lucky. Lucky with power far beyond your means. What? Let me put this into perspective for you, boy. If I had to take a random guess, I'd say you're only using about 10% of Thor's true power. I don't know if you're holding out on me, or if this is just truly all that you can muster. My guess is that if you tried to use any more, your body just wouldn't be able to handle it. I've seen what Thor Odinson was able to do in combat. Not only when we fought against one another, but when we fought side by side. And I can assure you, you don't even come close. Yet, as I walked around this city, all I heard were people singing the praises of Belle Crenel, the child who inherited the power of a god. If this is that said power, then perhaps us gods have become a laughingstock, Hercules said, looking to all of his counterparts. You have all become too relaxed, frolicking, playing with your Familias. And yet where has it gotten you? If Gore was to show himself once again, he'd call us all pathetic. How many of our brothers and sisters had to die for you to realize that truth? And yet, rather than getting strong, rather than putting forth any effort, you waste your time with these damned mortals who are but a flea whose existence lasts for only a moment. They are nothing more but the early rising and setting of the sun. Beautiful, but fleeting. They are weak. They are feeble. And they crumble under the pressure. And yet you all put your hopes, your faith, in them. Why? Has the age of the gods truly passed by? Has our fame truly dwindled? Have we become so low 
so pathetic. No matter. I told you all this once before. If you wish to play around with the humans, to give them a pat on the back, then by all means, go ahead. I won't stop you. But don't you dare ever put them on the same level as us. Bell Cronell. Do you understand? There's levels to this. Levels to this power. And you are not on this level. With that, Hercules would take his leave. Some guards were called in, but there was little they could do about it. Hercules had a reputation that preceded him. He wasn't someone to be taken in. Even the goddess Freya knew better than to get on his bad side. Hercules, for lack of a better term, was the true embodiment of chaos neutral. He didn't go out seeking to harm people with malevolence, but at the same time, he wasn't looking to do charity or do anything out of the kindness of his heart. Hercules was a force all into himself. He did as he pleased. He lived as he pleased. He drunk as he pleased. He fought as he pleased. He slept, drank, ate, loved. He did all of it as he pleased and as he saw fit. He was not bound by anyone or anything. He lived his life to the fullest, but only for himself, whatever his hearts desired. In all honesty, the only reason why he seemed somewhat manageable was back when Thor was around. Thor was the only person, the only one who could match him, or in most cases, surpass him. Thor, you could say, was like a yoke, a yoke that kept the wild beast that was Hercules in line. But now that there was no Thor, it was almost as if the wild beast was now set free, and there was no telling where his rampages would lead him. Bell would take some time to be healed, he still had the upcoming adventure into the next lower levels of the dungeon, the new unexplored territory that they had been given to map out. Of course, there were those in the party that felt like they should postpone the adventure. Some were worried about Bell's confidence, but in actuality, Bell's confidence had never been higher. Bell had the blessing of the Argonaut, of the boy who wanted to be a hero. While many would say that the power came from victory, his power truly thrived in the agony of defeat. It only spurred him to get better. It only made him want to improve and get stronger. Bell was more aware than anyone what it meant to be weak. He knew it. He felt it. He lived that life. He remembered running out of the dungeon, terrified, with his proverbial tail between his legs, covered in monster's blood, fearful. There was a reason why people made fun of him. Bell understood what it meant to be weak, and as such, he appreciated every ounce, every drop of strength he gained along the way. That was why, in the face of adversity, he didn't cower like he used to. The God was right. There was so much more power, so much more strength that he could achieve, and yet he was just scratching the surface. For better or for worse, there was an evil in this world, an evil that had to be expunged. Bell wanted to be that light in the darkness, and because of that, he would persist. He would continue to fight. Because Bell knew that when he fought, he didn't just fight for himself. He fought for those that couldn't fight for themselves. So maybe the God was right. Maybe Bell hadn't reached the true echelon of his power. That didn't mean he couldn't grow. Bell made a vow to himself. A vow that he would carry through till the end. 
he would master this power and become truly worthy of it in his eyes. Not just worthy because someone told him. His worth came from the values that he set. They were the values that he would live by. As he and his party set out for their journey into the dungeon, Bell set forth with a newly found vigor to grow as a hero. This concludes Don Machi, The Last King. What if Bell Cornell was Thor? Season 4, Part 1. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, then please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share, and hit that bell for post notifications so you can stay up to date on everything that is Power Core Productions and Podcastings that has to come out now and in the future. Stay tuned for tomorrow's video as we continue with What If Bell Cornell Was Thor, Season 4, Part 2. But that's going to do it for the end of today's video. I'm Javon Harrington with Power Core Productions and Podcastings. Signing off, and I'll see you next time.